The Rico Theta Web API is a standards-based API that is relatively easy to use. You just access an HTTP endpoint and send the payload. The structure of the API documentation consists of three sections. It's the protocols, the commands, and the options. The problem I often face is that there's eight protocols, 27 commands, and 52 options. And the options are strung together such that you may want to set the shutter delay or the ISO or other options all at the same time. As the number of buttons on the mobile app increases and the number of screens to display the data, uh, the state of the application becomes increasingly more difficult to manage. For this build, I'm going to use the state management provider package to manage the state to get the information from the button press then to the camera and back to the screen and to different screens. Another uh, problem is that the APIs, because there's a, such a large number of options and you may have a large number of buttons, the actual organization of the API requests to the camera are pretty difficult to organize. Like which folders do you put them in? Since this is a brand new app and it's just a demo, we're going to use Flutter 2.0. The primary trick with Flutter 2.0 is that the text buttons and the icon buttons, they have a little bit different language for the styling. We'll also add null safety support with new Dart 2.12. We're going to target the Ricoh Theta SC2. It's uh, the cheaper camera. It's cheaper than the Z1. The newest firmware at the as of today is 1.60.1. I'm going to build it on the Windows desktop, although it should also build on Android and iOS. Create a brand new Flutter project, change into the directory, and then migrate it to null safety. I've caught my Flutter project Theta API intro tutorial. Add provider for state management. The command sequence is flutter, pub add, and the name of the package. In this case, we're adding the provider package. This is what we're going to use for state management. In the main.dart file, I'm going to delete everything because we'll be able to focus more on just the specific things that's related to our application. The main stateless widget does have to return a material app, and then we're going to add a scaffold onto the material app to get things set up for us. From the body, we'll just add a some type of sample widget here. Just to make sure the app is can run and you know we've got something going on the screen, let's just run it and make sure a piece of text does come up. So I'm gonna put the GUI screens and the individual portions of the screen in this section called GUI sections. So I'm gonna, I'll drop both the stuff like the home screen as well as the, the bottom window portions into this subfolder. Right under lib, you got the GUI sections, and then within there, create a file, home screen, and that will be the main screen that the app will point to. So stateless widget, just call it home screen, and then you'll have to import material.dart. We're going to move the functionality over from main.dart to this new file, just you know, to keep it better organized, home underscore screen. So we'll just copy the stuff over that's within the scaffold and then drop it over into our new file here. Back in main.dart, get rid of the scaffold since we're, we're going to use the new widget that we created, which is home screen. It should be a duplicate of the old scaffold. It's just a better way to organize it for us. At this stage, the functionality should be identical. All we've accomplished with this step is to break out the home screen into a separate file 
and we place that into a subfolder, GUI underscore sections. We're going to wrap this within a column because it's going to be the top and the bottom portions of the screen. On the top portion, I'm envisioning a row. Um, there may be several buttons there to take some action with the camera. And the bottom portion is going to be a response window. I'm using a text widget instead of a text button at the moment just to get the placement going. To control how the screen is split, I'm going to wrap each of the top and bottom portions of the screen in an expanded widget. The way to control how much space is given to each expanded widget is with flex. So if you just set the flex equal, so the top and bottom, any number, right? So it's in a ratio. If, it's, if you set both the flex on the top to two and the bottom to two, the, the top bottom portion of the screen will be equal. Just to get the text placement, we'll put a text widget on there so we can see the placement on the screen to be scrollable. So I want to make the bottom portion scrollable. So we'll eventually wrap it in a single child scroll view. And then we'll wrap a container around the single child scroll view. Wrap a container around the single child scroll view. Set the width to double infinity. Add some color. We're next going to test the scrollability of the window by creating a sample file with some dummy text in here. So just create a file, in this case, test underscore text.dart, create a simple string variable, and we're going to import this uh, string variable into the main file on the home screen so we can make sure that the bottom window does scroll. I'm going to go to the site lorem ipsum, you can just search for it on Google, and copy uh, standard dummy text here, lorem ipsum. So just copy it from some place. It could be any type of text, right? We'll just, just get a long piece of text uh, that's obviously not um, you know, the actual result so you don't get confused. And then import it into the main home screen. So it's just the name of the file for the import. Once you import the name of the file, you can then access the variable that exists in that file. In the lower panel, which is the second of the two expanded widgets that we're using, uh, right now it says response goes here. We're just going to substitute the variable that we created in the other file, text underscore text dot dart, and place that name of that variable right there. And that should import the that longer text string that we just pasted in. It's appearing in the window. Unfortunately, it's not long enough. So I'm going to increase the text, the font size to actually just test the scrollability of that. So to add or increase the font size of a text widget, it's style and the, the, the widget that you pass style is text style. And within there, then you can add your font size. I'm, I'll set it to 30 a point. It scrolls. Now that we have the bottom portion scrolling, and that will be for the response that we're going to get from the HTTP request. Let's work a little bit on the top portion. Wrap the uh, pieces of text in a row because it's going to be a row of buttons shortly. And then we'll set the main axis alignment to space evenly so that the buttons will automatically space themselves apart. We're just going to template it out with pieces of text, these text widgets here, but we'll convert it over into text buttons so that uh, we can start the process of adding the request over to the API commands. Fortunately, the text and the text buttons takes the same space on the screen. So we now have a info button uh, that we can click, but there's no action because there's nothing within the curly brackets right now. It's a little difficult to see it, so I'm going to increase the font size of the text button, the text inside of the text button. And you can just go to the child, the text, text widget, do the same thing for the style, or text style, and then within there you can apply the font size. I'm going to set it to 20 just to make it a little easier to read. The primary objective of this portion of the tutorial is actually to 
put some of the functionality into a Dart package. The Dart package system is basically creating a library for your specific application. The library will add additional organizational capabilities. In the main folder of your project, create a subfolder called packages. Change into packages and then run the specific Flutter command. Flutter create hyphen hyphen template equals package. This will create a set of package files for you. I'm going to call my package theta underscore connection. This package will be private specific to my own application. I'm going to keep the package within the project. Make sure you go into the package directory and run the null safety migration command again. After migrating the package to null safety, go into the automatically generated lib folder, go into the theta connection, delete the default class that was created. Also go into test and delete the class there that was created. We won't be running the tests in this tutorial. The theta underscore connection dot dart file is not blank, but we're going to connect it to a bunch of different folders and files within those folders. I'm going to loosely structure the directory structure around how the documentation, the API documentation is structured. Make sure that you are in the lib folder of the package directory, not the project directory. There are now two lib folders on your project. Make sure that you are in the lib folder of the package, not the project. Within there, create the specific folders that we're going to store it. So it's commands, set options, it's get options. We'll also create one for protocols. And for the connection commands, we'll create a subfolder called common. The rest of the API requests will use the same common connection method. The first uh, subfolder we're going to work with is the protocols subfolder. Eventually we'll create the info and state requests here. Initially I'll just create something called test underscore hello dot dart to test to see whether the library itself works. Inside of the new file you need to tell it that it's part of this theta underscore connection dot dart file here. Part of our dart keywords. So that's the command part of and then it's the file name. There's no import parameters in these files. The imports are only in the theta underscore connection dot dart. Here you create your methods that you want. Before sending out an HTTP command to pull data from the network, we're just going to create a simple uh, hello world type of test function here. This completes the function. With the function completed, we now need to set up a linkage between the the new file, the method that we created, and the theta underscore connection dot dart. The, syn the syntax is straightforward. Instead of part of, it's just part. And then it's the name of the file. Theta underscore connection is the name of our package. And that is a central point at which we have to link the rest of the files. After putting the linkage to the file, this completes the configuration of the library. You next need to go into the project area. We're going to edit the pubspec.yaml file of the main project. It's the top level directory of your project. There are two pubspec.yaml files on your project. Make sure you are editing the one that is higher up. Make sure the packages folder is closed on your directory tree. In the pubspec.yaml file of your project, add the new library. So the name of the package you just created is theta underscore connection. So we're going to add that in right below the rest of the packages that we're using. Then indent two spaces and then add the path of where that uh, package is on your, in your project. The package path is packages, then theta underscore connection. Run flutter pub get again if it doesn't run automatically, then test it out. There should be no errors. The, the error in my console is because I needed to run the, the dart migrate command again. Then let's get the output from the hello function and print it out to the console. If it still fails, you may need to completely stop your application. You also might need to stop VS Code and restart it. Sometimes these errors occur because you, you have to migrate some of the functionality from one portion of the app in, into the library. After restart, 
pressing the info button. The library works great. Fantastic. Congratulations. Fantastic. The library is working. We can now go back to the library or the, the package and start adding some additional commands to it. Let's do it. Right, before connecting it to the camera, we're going to use the HTTP package and pull some fake REST API data. So there's a number of these free uh, REST API testing services. I'm going to use this one JSON placeholder. You can use whichever one you want to. We'll just set up an HTTP connection within our package and we'll grab this endpoint here and use the information from the endpoint to test the functionality of our next button. So in order to get the API endpoint, we're going to use the HTTP package. We're going to have to import it into the theta underscore connection dot dart file. The HTTP package must be in your pubspec.yaml for the package. Make sure you add the HTTP dependency in the pubspec.yaml file of the package. Once again, remember you have two pubspec.yaml files within your project. You need to be editing the one that's within the package. Then after you edit pubspec.yaml, you need to run flutter pub get again if it doesn't run automatically. Within theta underscore connection dot dart, I'm going to import it as HTTP. Under protocols, I'm going to create a new file. Uh, test underscore network dot dart, which I will use to test the network connection. In the new file, you first need to tell it that it's part of the package. So at the top, it's part of this theta connection. You can use your previous uh, test underscore hello dot dart file as a reference, and then follow the same syntax in your new file that is going to test the HTTP network connection. Since it's a network connection, it's going to have to be a future because you don't know when the response is going to come back over the network. And we're just going to grab a string. The HTTP package also actually returns something called a response. That's the name of the class. But we're going to take the response body and then return a string. Because it's uh, coming from the network, it has to be an async. That's what makes it return a future. And then we're going to have to use await when we actually do the request. The HTTP package requires the use of a URI. The test connection is a HTTP GET. It's not a POST. So we're going to use the HTTP package, HTTP.GET and then pass it the URI. It's a future, so make sure you use await. So back in theta underscore connection dot dart, use the part syntax and specify the name of the new file that you just created, which is test underscore network dot dart. It's in the protocols subfolder. Just to Recap, the theta underscore connection dot dart file does act as a central place. That's a central connection point for all of the files. I'm going to change the function name to match the file name. Back on the home screen, create another button that will access the new function that we just created. A new text button in the row of buttons that we're using to access the camera. Similar to the first test, we're going to have a response, but instead of just a string, we're going to pull the future because we're pulling a HTTP command over from the library that we just created. So we'll need to make this uh, async and use await because it is a future. We can first uh, just put the, the text in so that we can actually see the button and then go back and uh, deal with the, the network. Since this is just testing the HTTP package with the network, let's just call it a test network. It's uh, testing the internet network and pulling it from the internet. A 
copy the font style of the previous button, making it a bit bigger, uh, font size 20, so that it's easier to see. Go back to the callback function and let's print out the response. As I mentioned earlier, you have to use async and await because the response is a future. After you grabbed that, uh, that string, you can then test it out and hopefully we'll get the response back from the network. And there it is. Network. We're grabbing an HTTP response from the internet using our library. We are off and running. Congratulations on creating a custom package for your network connections. We are off and running here. Let's just change the name of the button to hello to more easily reflect like what it's actually coming back. Fantastic. And I'm just itching to put more of these API requests into our library now. The purpose of this tutorial is to get acquainted with the Dart package, the custom package development system, so that we can make more scalable applications. With this foundation of, of custom packages for your application, we're next going to move on to provider for state management. And we're going to get the request from the button press. We're going to get the response from the HTTP package. And we're going to put it into that secondary window at the bottom, which currently just has this sample text there, the lorem ipsum. In the next video, we're going to use provider to manage the state of that bottom portion of the screen and get the response in there. Thanks for joining us for this tutorial on custom packages in Dart. Subscribe to the channel so you can get alerted of the next tutorial. Have a great day.